Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special edition of the Spartan Sideline Report. Today, we will take a peek into the football program as we get set for the spring football season, but also take an in-depth look at the 2013 recruiting class. Hello, I'm Ross Gordon, the play-by-play -play voice of the Spartans, joined by head football coach Pete Adrian. For the past few months, the Spartan football coaches have been on the road looking for future Spartans who will hopefully bring championship number two to the program, and 18 recruits decided to become Spartans, and this is a class that meets the program's needs, but also one that helps Coach Adrian get much-needed depth in some key areas, and Coach Adrian, we, we talked about the depth and we talked about what we needed over the last couple of months, and one of those things we, we decided on was the was the really the back end of the defense where we need to step it up a little bit and a little bit more depth at the running back position. And we really did a good job of uh, meeting those needs. Yeah, I was very pleased with that. Uh, you know, a lot of times you want to go out and meet your needs, you can't get them because the recruiting is a very fickle thing. Some years you have a lot of student athletes that can help you and other years it, you're really hard to find. And this year for us was a very abundant year in the state of Virginia. You know, 17 of our 18 recruits came from the state of Virginia, and I'm very pleased with the physical size and the talent that uh, we were able to, to get uh, really at all the positions. And, uh, you know, our secondary was a, was a big thing that we wanted to help, and we were, able to, we were able to bring in five, six DBs right there who are all 5'11 to 6'3", uh, run well, very athletic, good speed. Uh, most of them could play either, either safeties or corners. And of course, we'll have to put some guys in different positions right there, but that's really going to help the back end of that. It will really help our special teams. Uh, running back wise, we were very fortunate to, to get a couple running backs who really have very good speed, the breakaway speed. You know, we've got some good running backs returning, obviously, but uh, you know, we don't have the four four guys now. Now we got two of them that can, uh, if they get that step, the, the band's probably going to start playing for us at the other end of the end zone, which is always a good thing. Coach, we talked about these athletes that you have, but one good thing about it is they're not just regular DBs. You have guys coming in who can return kicks. You have guys who can uh, also play on the offensive side of the football. I know you won't have them do that, but you have explosive athletes at both, uh, both of those positions. Uh, Harry Freeman, I know, brings to mind one of them uh, out of Lake Taylor, right out of here in Norfolk. Who are some of the other guys who can help not only on the, on the defensive side of the ball, ball and offensive side of the ball, but more importantly on special, special teams as well? Well, um, Colin Fraser, a uh, junior college player from Alfred Community College. Uh, he's from Woodbridge, Virginia. He, uh, he's very explosive. He had uh, uh, four punt returns last year for touchdown, two kickoff returns for touchdowns. Uh, started at, at uh, his, his uh, career at Western Kentucky, was a return guy there also. So uh, we're very excited about seeing him. He's an explosive athlete. He uh, also could play corner, could play safety for us. Uh, very excited about getting him. He's about five foot eleven, about 185 pounds. So, you know, we actually have three or four different guys that are coming in there that are kick return guys, and that'll be uh, interesting to see in fall camp how that competition goes on back there. But it'll certainly be some new people. One thing you talk about is competition, and I think this recruiting class helped with that with that aspect of well. You you brought in some some young linebackers, some guys who will be able to challenge some guys and give them some give them some rest. I know how you like to go deep at that linebacker position, but you also did a good job of, of bringing in bringing in some players who can play right away, especially maybe on the offensive line as well. Well, you know, go back with the defense again. The three linebackers that we. Uh, Sign all three of them could definitely be on the special teams from day one. I mean, they're six foot two, six foot three, run very well, uh, and again uh, on film, a lot, what I always like when they get there, they bring something to the party. You know, they all like to hit, and, and that's a big thing you have to have for a linebacker. They got to like contact, and all three of them do. Uh, I, another guy that I'm very excited about is Demetrius Ferrovi from Northside High School. Uh, very athletic, tight end. He was an all-state defensive end performer. But he's six foot five, about 230 pounds, and uh, I think he's really going to add to the depth at tight end, along with Joe, Joe Hawkins and Jimmy Lynch right there. We're going to have three guys that really look to be, you know, what you're talking about, NFL type of tight ends for us right there, and I think that's going to be a big thing. Uh, offensive line, we were able to bring in three people, um, excellent size, good athletic ability. Uh, they could certainly challenge for that, but I always said, you know, we have, I think, 10 of our top 13 back from last year. It's hard for a freshman to step in, but every year uh, you have somebody surprised, just like Mike Phillips last year stepped in and ended up starting four ball games for us and played it throughout the year. So that competition will be very interesting when they come to camp. But it really gives us depth. I think we come to camp now with I think we have 15 offensive linemen on, on scholarship, and that's a key. 
Coach, you also talk about recruiting and you also talk about depth and you also talk about competition. One of the places where obviously there was a, a need for more competition last year was probably at the quarterback position. Uh, Nico Flores returns this year. and He'll be in for spring ball, but it's also good to have somebody come in at the mid at the mid season uh, time to give you an opportunity to see what he can bring to the table. And Jason Stewart, uh, a Virginia native as well, comes in and he looks to provide that that challenge that you want. Well, and I also want to throw in Zach Dutel. He's a redshirt freshman for us last year, also from the state of Virginia. And, you know, they're all kind of three, that are kind of the same type of mode. They're six foot two plus, 200 pound plus, can run, throw the ball pretty well. And uh, one thing that we have to see, who's going to rise to the top? Last year, their quarterback position, we just did not get better as the season went on. We kind of stayed the same, and that really hurt us. And uh, now we've got to see, as I said from last year, who can run the team. We've got to find out who can do that. Coach, I, I guess now that we move into and transition into the spring uh, portion of it all, beyond the, beyond the young men who you recruited and who you feel like will be able to help you, this year coming into next year's, uh, this spring, what do you want to get out of some of those guys who we might not have heard of last year that might have an opportunity to make some plays for you? Well, you know, last year we actually had 13 freshmen played for us in one way or the other, mostly because of injuries and things of that nature. But, you know, right now we're in the off-season program. We have 92 people in the off-season program. There's going to be a lot of competition in spring. And, and the players know that, and they know that the best players play. So even if you're a two- or three-year starter, you got to go out there and perform to keep your position right there, which I always like that type of competition. Uh, it's going to be interesting because one, one thing we want to do offensively from, from a – standpoint is we're going to get back and re redefine what what identity what do we do you know what are we going to be and that's what we got to find out you know we're going to be a tough football team we're going to be a spread football team we're going to be a pass team run team find out what it's going to be and you know i'm not going to tell you what that's going to be right now but <laughs> we're going to find that out during spring coach uh, year two under uh, offensive coordinator howard fagans so the, the young the guys have a little bit of the terminology down they have what he likes to do his philosophy down uh, talk a little bit about what this spring is going to be for that group of people because most of the guys there were, were contributors last year. They might not have gotten the numbers, but they were contributors, so everybody was involved. Talk a little bit about what you're going to get out of the year two, especially in the spring season from this offense. Well, there, there's nothing like experience. And, you know, uh, you look and you know, basically we lost two offensive linemen a year ago. Uh, we lost two receivers, but we lost Reggie Garrett mid-year, so you already lost one receiver. Uh, we lost two running backs that were seniors back there, but the other guys were playing. I mean, I think you saw with uh, uh, Conley Smith at tailback, some you'll see that some more, you know, being the big guy back there. And, of course, we're in the process now trying to find a couple more fullbacks to help take that load off him because he started as a true freshman like that. But, uh, you know, one thing that we got to do in football is a, is a tough football. It's tough. You've got to be a physical team. And the one thing that I've always said, the team that is most physical usually wins. And that's one thing that we're going to find out in the spring. Defensively, coach, we look at we look at this this team and say, hey, we we lost a couple of pieces, but the majority of the team is back intact. Uh, and some guys that that left last year, you have capable guys already here to step and fill some of those voids. Uh, how do you continue to let and and make this defense better? Well, I, I think again, it comes back with experience again. But the, probably the key to us is that we play so many people during the year. You know, I mean, we have probably an 18, 19 player rotation throughout the ball game from the second series into the game. I don't think anybody else really does that in our, in our conference that, I, that I'm aware of that. I mean, they may rotate linemen, but we're rotating people everywhere. And what that does is it certainly gives you experience. And then what we try to do if the game's on the line, then you want to have your best players on the field in the fourth quarter. But guys know that uh, they have to be prepared to play, so they practice better because they know they're going to get out there and play. And the only way you're going to get better is to play in the game. You can practice all you want, but you've got to go out there when you don't know the guy from across from you. And, you know, people are in the stands and the bands are playing and all that stuff. How do you react to that stuff? And, you know, I think the formulas work very well here. We've always been pretty strong defensively, and there's no reason why we won't be. I mean, we have, I think our defensive line, we have seven of our top eight guys coming back in the rotation. You know, we lost some real good linebacking play uh, right there and some, some experience, but the guys behind them are more capable and played a lot. I mean, Lyndon Trail is probably the, potentially the best defensive player in this league. Uh, you know, being an all-conference player as, as a sophomore right there. And then, you know, Marcel Koch, an inside linebacker, I don't know if there's anybody any better than him. So there's some real good guys to build off of right, you know, in that situation. And, and then our secondary, uh, our starters are back from a year ago, and they're only going to get better from the idea that they played 10, 12 games. 
Coach Finally, uh, always a huge part of the ball game is, is special teams. And I don't want to leave that part out because we did address that need as well. We lost Everett Goldberg, who was an all-conference performer uh, at the kickoffs and also field goals. And we also lost the punter last year in Dylan Shaddix. But we did a good job of recruiting one guy who can do all three things. Talk a little about what we got in the special teams. Well, you know, Cameron Maroff is, you know, he's from um, – uh, Forest Park High School in Virginia, um, does everything well. You know, he's a good, he's a two-step punter, which I already like. Uh, he's been kicking off the ground for two years, which is a big thing. In high school, he used a tee. He did not use a tee, and that's a big thing, so he's already made that transition. I think when Coach Daly gets with him and spends a lot of time, he's only going to get better because he's only played football for two years. He was a soccer player before that. And then Ryan Lee is here, who's, uh, who kicked for us as a true freshman, red shirt and, and back. And, and Ryan has really gotten better, and his leg has gotten better and whatnot. And it's going to be his job as far as field goals and kickoffs to loot. So there's going to be some competition there. And then we'll have one or two more walk-on kickers come in. And, you know, we should have three or four kickers here. And let's, we'll, whoever, it, whoever it is does the best job because one thing – I think kicking is one of the easier things to evaluate because it's really black and white. You know, I mean, there's the field goal. Did you kick it? Did you make it? There's the kickoff. How far did you kick it? Punt. How, what's your hang time in the punt? And then again, how do you handle the pressure coming after you? And that's one thing I will say about Cameron. Uh, he was a very cool customer under fire. Whether it was a bad snap or something like that, he still got the kickoff. It was a heavy punt rush. He didn't panic. He still got the kickoff. And that's what was really impressive about him. Coach, uh, finally, always a huge thing for you in the summertime. Uh, always a lot going on for you and this program to help raise money and help do things like that. A golf tournament is always uh, in the plans and uh, also sponsor locker campaign and other things. Talk a little about what the summer is going to bring for you as well. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, our golf tournament has been very successful and hopefully it, it will continue to be. We're always the second Monday in July, which I think this year, I think it's July 8th at Greenbrier Country Club, which is certainly one of the better country clubs around the area and we've always had a great time and you know we have always have a hundred plus people out there playing and, and uh, I really think it, it's turned into almost an alumni tournament in one aspect but uh, they really enjoy that. Uh, sponsor the locker has really been a big help for us with people you know sponsor a player or whatnot and all the money that we get goes right back into the program you know it helps us in summer school helps pay for summer school it helps if uh, during camp or something we need to buy pizzas for the kids one night, we're able to use it for stuff like that. It really gives us the little extras that uh, uh, we try to provide in this football program. So it's really been a great help to us. Thank you, Coach Agent, for your time. I've hit some balls on Greenbrier Parkway in your tournament. Hopefully I'll get a chance to do that this way this year, too. For Ross, it's always a pleasure. It is. Spring practice is right around the corner, and we will make sure that we bring you all of the news and notes on how the spring season goes for the Spartans. Don't forget that NSU will have seven home games next season, highlighted by non-conference matchups with Maine, Old Dominion, and Charleston Southern, and conference games with Savannah State, Hampton, Florida A&M, and the season finale versus South Carolina State. As always, we would like to thank the NSU Creative Services Department for all of their help today, as well as Coach Adrian for his time. For all of the news on Norfolk State Athletics, please log on to the web at www.nsuspartans.com. For Coach Adrian, I'm Ross Gordon. Thank you for watching the Spartan Sideline Report on nsuspartans.com.